Why hello again internet. So I went downstairs and I heard the doorbell ring and there was a package. So this is the package from E3D. As always, when they send you stuff, they always send you candy. I almost like this sticker better. So I might use this sticker instead of the one that I have on my printer now. So my buddy got an extra 0.8 millimeter nozzle head. So this is an extra nozzle you can order from E3D as well. And this is so you can use the 0.8 millimeter as well. I have a 0.8 and a 0.25. You get your fan, your new thermistor. Man, his wire is blue. I'm so jealous. All of the Allen keys you need, the heater block, the heat brake, the actual nozzle, and then the heat sink. So now let's go assemble it. So the two major things you're going to need is a seven millimeter wrench and or ratchet and a, I want to say it was a 14 millimeter, um, but a crescent wrench works the best. So as far as the mechanical side go, you're going to take the heater block, the heat sink, the heat brake, and the nozzle. And these are all pretty much just going to fit together. So first, you're going to take the heater block and you're going to take the 0.4 millimeter nozzle and you're going to screw that into the heater block. Tighten it to the bottom and the bottom is located essentially with the screw hole right here. And you're just going to screw the nozzle into place. When you have it just not necessarily finger tighten, you don't have to tighten it here. You're going to go about a quarter turn out. And this is going to leave a space here so you can tighten it later on. And then you're going to take your heat brake and the heat brake is going to screw the short end onto the actual piece and again just finger tighten don't need to torque anything right now take your heat sink and then screw that in all the way and as far as mechanics go this is the entire extruder really simple to put the mechanical side of the extruder together so you're going to take your seven millimeter ratchet and your crescent wrench and very lightly just a little nut you don't need any force really going on to that next thing is that the heat sink is still going to be loose on here we want to grab the wrench again do a slight torque on this one as well the heat brake is a very gentle piece so make sure that you're not going to torque anything to ridiculous proportions this is not a car you will break something if you tighten too hard but pretty much this is the mechanical side of the extruder everything's all done after that, it's time to put the electrical system together. So let's start with the fan and the injected molded fan duct. This is pretty simple. There are four screws that come in your little fix bag. I'm gonna dump those out real quick. And the four long, really coarse threads, these ones right here, these go through your fan. You will need a screwdriver, but you can use the one that actually came with the Robo 3D. This is the one that came with my printer. So if you don't know which way the airflow is going, because you want the airflow to go into the heat sink, the panels that actually hold the brush motor onto it. Airflow always goes towards these panels, the sticker, and whenever the fan is open, that's the side that's the intake. So this is a square and so is this. So there's no wrong way to put this, but in terms of how you want your wiring to go, I'm gonna have the, cartridge, the heater cartridge mounted this way along with the thermistor. And so I'm gonna want the fan to be on this side and the wire to be down because I want all of the wires to meet up together and go through the same tubing. I have the heater core and thermistor wire on this side while I have the fan on this side. Now I want all the wires to go in the same direction so I'm going to put the, the fan wires this way so they match up with the heater and the thermistor. And so now I'm just going to screw these four into the actual injected molded piece. So after you have that all taken care of and this is now mounted together, we're gonna go back to the heater block. So now we're gonna start incorporating the mechanical side of the electronic system. So like I was saying before, I want all my wires to come out on one side. So I'm gonna put my heater cartridge in here like this. Then you're gonna take the longer screw you have and the Allen key that was supplied and you're just going to screw this in here. So I'm using the crescent wrench and the supplied Allen key to tighten this up. You basically shouldn't be able to move the heater cartridge right here after it is secured. And the next thing we're going to do is the thermistor on the side. So now that's out of the way, let's now dress the thermistor. Now the thermistor is tiny. This is fiberglass sheathing that they use to put on top of this so that these two terminals don't short out. What I do is I provide a large offset so that they can no longer touch each other when I actually put them together. So I use a pair of the diagonal cutters 
and I'm gonna cut right here. All you have to do is slip this on to one of the legs and then slip the other on to the other leg and just make sure they go all the way down to the thermistor at the end so that those two terminals can't touch. So you see this large distance right here between this one and this one. It's so they can't be touched together. And so now you're gonna use these tiny little ferrules that they give you and you put them right over the collar like so. And the entire time you still wanna make sure that your thermistor is still all the way at the end. And because you're reading the resistance across a terminal, the negative and the positive side or the red and black side don't matter in this case. So I strip the wires like this. So when the wires are straightened, the black wire on this case is shorter than the red wire. So this red wire is gonna go down here. The black wire is gonna go up here. And I'm just gonna cut the excess here and the small excess here. And I'm just going to crimp these together. So just like I wired my fan ducts, I'm going to isolate one of the connections and then I'm gonna put a heat shrink tubing around both. Isolate just a single connection and then I run the heat shrink tubing around the thermistor. And this makes it so that there's not only a separation of physical contact, there is a isolation underneath this isolation. So all you have to do now is put it on the actual extruder. And this is very simple. What I do is I open up one piece like this. I bend an end to put into the actual extruder itself. And there's a small hole that the thermistor fits inside right here. You're gonna add a little pressure to make sure it's got nice contact with the actual block. So you can put the spacer on the screw and you're gonna put it around the wiring. So once your heater cartridge and your thermistor are wired in the same spot and your nozzle's tightened and everything is clamped down properly, you're gonna put your fan duct back on the extruder. The way that I have mine set up and the way that I'm gonna have my friend set up is that all the wires meet up in this corner right here. Take the zip tie that they supplied, and then I cut off the excess right here. And now the extruder is pretty much all put together. The last piece is to put the Bowden tube and the Bowden coupler in. All you have to do is just press gently and let this pop into place. And the way this works is that it's adding force to the inside. So when you push on this, it'll go in. But if you try to pull this back, the Bowden coupler grabs it and prevents it from pulling out. So you're gonna put this all the way down and you wanna press and turn a little bit. So this tube goes all the way in here past the heat sink and touches the heat break. And this allows a constant connection all the way through the extruder head. And so don't cut this off yet. We'll be getting to that soon. So as far as assembly goes, this is how you assemble the E3D V6. In the next video, we're going to install it. I hope this video helps you assemble your E3D V6 hot end. If you have any questions about this video, make sure you leave them in the comments below. The next video is going to be how to remove the stock extruder and take your assembled V6 hot end and put that into the Robo 3D R1. Now the video will be out very soon, but if you want to know immediately, you can click the subscribe button. And thanks for watching.